Hi, and welcome to lesson 13. This lesson is on blind quantum computation, and it continues the discussion that we started in the previous lesson. We're going to begin with the first step where we talk about measurement-based quantum computation. So we saw that, measure, uh, that a circuit model can be used to hide information about delegated quantum computation that the client is trying to run on a quantum server. Usually the circuit model works in the following way. We have some input state given here by the ket psi in, and then we manipulate this state by a, a set of unitary operations. They could be single qubit, they could be multi qubit, and some of them we can apply in parallel, for example here, or we have to do them in series. In this way, when we compose them all together, we apply some unitary U. And it's this unitary that characterizes the quantum computation. And at the end, our qubits are left in some output state given by the ket psi out. So some of the features of the quantum circuit model are the following. Usually the initial state is separable. For example, all the qubits are initialized in the state zero. And the computation is driven by unitary operations. We apply coherent manipulation to the qubits and that's how we perform quantum computation. And measurements are used to obtain a classical readout at the end. Once we have our quantum state psi out, we can apply measurements in various bases to find out the classical bits, and that will tell us about the uh, answer to our quantum computation. But real quantum devices cannot apply arbitrary unitary gates. We have to be satisfied with using only a fixed set of gates that can approximate an arbitrary unitary gate. Examples of universal gate sets are the following. We can do rotations around the x, y, and z axis, apply a phase gate with arbitrary phase phi, and as our two qubit gate, we can take C0. If we're only allowed to do these operations, we can approximate an arbitrary unitary gate. And different set uh, of universal quantum gates we saw already in the previous lesson are given by the two qubit C0, and then single qubit Hadamard gates, phase gate, and a T gate. Measurement-based model of quantum computation is radically different from the circuit model. Sometimes measurement-based quantum computation is also abbreviated to MBQC. It was proposed by Rausendorf and Briegel, and it works in the following way. These are the main differences from the quantum circuit model. Now the computation is not driven by a unitary, but it's driven by single qubit measurements. And the initial state is not separable, but it's a multi-qubit entangled resource state. In fact, we have encountered these resource states already when we were talking about repeater graph state link architecture. The resource state for MBQC is also a graph state. To remind you, we start with a graph, which is a set of vertices connected by a set of edges. And at every vertex, we place an equal superposition of the zero and one state. And then we apply control phase gates these CZ gates, between the vertices of the graph or between the qubits that are connected by an edge in the graph. For example, we might have the following graph as our underlying topology for our quantum graph state. So what we do is we place a plus state at every vertex, and for every edge, we apply a control phase gate. And this will entangle our, our qubits and give us a multipartite entangled resource state. Just like there, was, um, there are certain sets of universal quantum gates in the quantum circuit model, the combination of the type of resource state and which basis we can use for measurements is important. For example, uh, a universal combination is the following. A graph state given by this graph, so it's a regular 2D structure. Such a graph state has a special name and it's called the cluster state. And if we can measure in the xy plane, as well as perform Z measurements, then we can perform any quantum computation that we wish. We can also dispense with the Z measurements and we can use only measurements in the XY plane if we are able to prepare the following resource state. So it looks very similar to a cluster state, but it's got a different structure. This state is called a brickwork state. And it's this particular universal combination that's going to be relevant for our discussion in this and the next step. So we said that uh, MBQC is very different from a quantum circuit model. 
how does MVQC work? Why is it that the computation is driven by measurements only? Well, the answer lies in the fact that measurements can both process as well as propagate information along a graph state. In order to see it, let's consider a simple example. This is called an input state teleportation. And it's very similar to the teleportation protocol that we've been talking about in terms of quantum networks. Let's say that we have only two qubits, and the first is initialized in an arbitrary superposition given by the state psi. And the second qubit is initialized in a plus state. After entangling them with a CZ gate, we measure the first qubit in the X basis. Or we can simply apply Hadamard gate and then measure in the Z basis. The state of the second qubit is given by this expression. We apply Hadamard to the initial state and a conditional unitary Pauli x, depending on the outcome of our measurement on the first qubit. We can view this uh, scenario in the uh, graph state picture. We begin with two qubits, psi and psi, uh, plus, which are separable. We apply the C phase gate, we entangle them, then we measure the first qubit in the Pauli x basis, and by doing that we teleport the initial state of the first qubit onto the uh, um, state of the second qubit. Let's look at a more complicated example how we can not only propagate information but process it as well. This is known as gate teleportation. So the example is very very similar to what we discussed before but this time we also uh, put in here this rotation around the z-axis. So rotation in the xy plane of the block sphere. And it's not too difficult to show that the output uh, on the, the state of the second qubit after the measurement will be the following. So it's the same as before, except this time we are rotating the state psi with this unitary rz theta, which we applied on the first qubit. So by doing something to the first qubit, we can also affect the state of the second qubit, as well as teleport the initial state psi. But we don't have to think about it that we are applying a unitary gate to the first qubit. We can view this whole green block as a measurement in the xy plane at, the give, at an angle 2 theta. This both teleports and rotates our input state. And this is the basis for measurement-based quantum computation. Also, a particular feature of MBQC is that we have these measurement byproducts, this uh, uh, unitary gates x to the power of m, where m is the measurement outcome of our measurement on the previous qubit. We have to take this into account by subsequent measurement angle and adjust this angle uh, if we want to continue processing information. This unavoidably uh, introduces an ordering to which qubits can be measured between which and meaning that the subsequent measurements must be adaptive. We must know the outcome of previous measurements because before we can measure the next following qubits. So let's see how MBQC works on a brick work state. Here, each row of physical qubits represents one logical qubit. So here, row one represents one qubit. You can think of this as your wire in a quantum circuit model. So over here, we have a brick work state representing four logical qubits. And each of these red unit cells can perform either single qubit unitaries or apply a two qubit unitary. So let's see how that works. And the information usually flows from where we start measuring, usually on the left side, and it's propagated to the right side. If we want to apply single qubit unitaries, all we have to do is the following measurement pattern. Let's say that we take one unit cell from the brickwork state and the first qubit is initialized in the state psi and the second qubit in the state phi. And then we measure these qubits at an angle alpha, then an angle beta, and then angle gamma. Similarly, for the lower logical qubit, we measure it at angles alpha prime, beta prime, gamma prime. This zero means that we are measuring in the x basis. The output of such a measurement pattern is that we are applying a particular unitary u to the initial state psi and some other u prime to the initial state phi. Here the um, angles alpha, beta, gamma determine what type of unitary we are applying. 
if you want to perform a C0 gate, then the measurement pattern is the following. We start measuring both qubits uh, in the X basis, and most of the qubits are uh, measured in the X basis, apart from these three, which are measured at an angle of pi over 4 or minus pi over 4. And if our in input states are psi and phi, then the output state of the two qubits at the end of the measurement is a C0 applied between the input states. These are the basics of MBQC. Now we're going to apply them to a height information and a height delegated quantum computation.